people trying to make money out of art, like investors investing in art is sort of like makes me scared. You know, I see all these ads on Twitter. There's some uh, masterworks.io. It's, it's a, uh, a, a, you know, it's like they sell fractional fine art. And, uh, and, um, and so they're trying to, to, trying to, to parlay art as like an investment vehicle. And, you know, Morgan Stanley or Bank of America has a fine art fund where it's like, you know, they, they buy, they, 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 they scour the art schools and art forum and they buy what they think is going to go up. But it's such a market that can be rigged, you know? Yeah. Um, and, you know, if you're really, tr like the people that have made a lot of money and become big, you know, in, in the art world, they didn't passively collect art and then just watch it magically go up in value. You look at Gertrude Stein, you look at Vollard, you look at Charles Saatchi or Bob Skull or whatever, like they played a major part in their own art collections becoming big, you know? So I get scared when people start kind of talking about how this is a great way to just like, uh, you know, sit around and watch your portfolio go up, you know? Like if you didn't buy a piece of art first and foremost because you like it, then <laughs> there's better ways to be making money. Yeah. You know? Uh, and then look at, have you ever heard all these stories about how the CIA totally totally manipulated the art market in the 50s, 60s, and 70s to, no, uh, as part of a culture war? Dear God, tell me more. If you, no, no, there's books on the subject now, my friend. If you search CIA modern art, they were hand in glove with the media, with the critics, with the, with the auction houses at creating a bubble in American art as to, to show that American exceptionalism, we are number one, the Soviet Union is old fashioned, you know, contempt, like they're stuck in the 19th century and America is on the moon. And so they threw money behind Pollock and Clement Greenberg was one of their boys. And when they took these paintings to the auction houses in New York, they were breaking records left and right because the CIA was just throwing money into the auction houses. And so it was like, a win-win for them because they were able to get all these giant headlines and how America is the greatest thing ever. Yeah, this is all. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you're putting up a thing here that's showing. Um, yeah, maybe you can't see it if I'm a thing. Yeah, I'm just. I was, yeah, I, yeah. I decided it, to pull it up so you could see it, but I've realized. And it really you may makes not me question everything that you think about about abstract expressionism and blue chip art from the '60s to now. Yeah. You know that. They just, we got played. I'm really and, pissed know, about Jackson really Pollock. I love out. Jackson Pollock. I know, that's the thing. These guys were good, but the fact that artists like Grant Wood and, and um, uh, the American regionalists, Thomas Hart Benton, they were borderline commies, you know? They certainly were socialists. And, uh, and, and you know, for whatever you believe in that, their work portrayed the American scene and they painted poor people and they painted the plight of the farmer and the plight of the black person and they, and they had subject matter. And yeah. that was not, that was not what the CAA was interested in, you know, like the more that, so they just got rid of everything. They got rid of subject matter. They got rid of chiaroscuro. They got rid of figuration. They got rid of, of all all representation and then they just deconstructed painting until it got flatter and flatter and then you just ended up with like i don't know stripes <laughs> and uh minimalism so like what so you think this was like the the so you think that was that was their goal the minute that like the the end where it turned into like just minimalism I do think, you think that's do you think that was their goal just to like because I, I see a similar thing happening in a lot of industries, right? Where things have become like weirdly simplistic. Like, and it's yeah. like, I saw this thing. It was like about how all logos look the fucking same now. They all have the exact same font, the exact same styling. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's like because of Adobe. <laughs> well, possibly, but that doesn't explain it. Adobe's got a lot of font. 
Like, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I noticed that for a long time, every logo was a hexagon of some sort. You know, the computers love the hexagons. Yeah, well, hexagons are the best agons, if uh, anyone knows. Oh, this. I love hexagons. I mean, when I was a kid, I used to draw them over and over because they can be flat and they can look like a cube simultaneously, you know? Yeah, I love it. I'm just going to pull up this video for people if they can look at it. It's called Hexagons are the Best Agons by CBG Cray. Um, I, I believe it. I'm a fan of hexagons. I love me some CBG Cray. He's like, he's basically, I think he may be the king of YouTube. People need to check this video out. Hexagons are the best agons. Anyway. Okay, I'm going to check that out. Um, am I still not? Am I still casting that other stuff? No, I am. No, <laughs> I, see, I just see me on the screen though. Yeah, there we go. I'm back. Lovely. So, um, Alex, it has been an absolute pleasure chatting to you, man. It's uh, been a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, we didn't. Uh, thanks for having me on. Yeah, it was a pleasure. I look pleasure. forward to seeing some clips or stuff. I subscribe to your YouTube channel now. Oh, thank you. Well, yes, there will be this plus some and you clips. you've got some big names on here. Yeah, I've been pretty lucky, people, actually, like... um, so far. I mean, I'm, I'm sort of uh, famous. But you know what's crazy about being well-known and, like, is you can be really well-known, but then you're still in, like, I could name, I could start rattling off a bunch of comedians that I think are like, oh, some of the greatest comedians, culture, cultural landmarks, you know? And you'd say like, yeah, you ever heard of Doug Stanhope? And people are like, no, who's that? Oh, Doug like, Stanhope? He's one of the fucking funniest comics ever. So it's like being famous. I'm a, I'm, I'm a tempest in a teapot. <laughs> well, I'm s somewhat well-known amongst the GameStop community. Um, who oh, good. I, who I'm writing my book about. So like they... Because um, all, most of my biggest interviews have been with people who are in that world. So I managed to get quite a lot of viewers from that. So that was nice. So I'm so somewhat that's why known. The Citadel, in you're giving me that tip with exactly. painting the Citadel. Citadel on fire. Securities needs to be on fire. So now, uh, if I Google it, is there is there like a, a building? Oh, yeah, is, there's a building. There is a building. So there was okay. one in Chicago, and now they're moving to Miami. But the Chicago oh, okay. one, which is the perfect excuse to to uh, to do on fire since they're fleeing it. Um, oh my god! And there was footage that people, some of the people went down with drones. Right, this is amazing. Like I will never get over some of the stuff that happened during this this saga. Uh, like, <laughs> so first of all, people started taking pictures of the building at night, being like, "Why are these guys working late? What's going down?" Like, yeah. and then then someone took a drone out. And started like like hovering around it, and then loads of people started doing this. And one night, someone wow. caught some Citadel Citadel employees on like the fifteenth floor sniffing things off the table whilst working late. Oh my god! <laughs> some idea powder, bad idea powder. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was amazing. Like, <laughs> oh, god. And then oh, there goes their money. They're just snorting it right there. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, then, and then, then they, um, then, like, there was, like, at one point when the drone pictures were appearing on the subreddit, there was, like, a spike in, like, drone laws on Google, um, oh, like, shit. in Chicago, in the area where the thing is. Like, you can't do fly drones this close to a building now, and... Oh, man. Yeah, it, it, it never stops getting old. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment for us in the comments below. Let me know what you thought and if you'd like to see more of this from the show. Thank you, and we'll see you again next time.